Right, let us settle the big one. DDR4 versus DDR5 and memory speed. If you're looking to buy yourself a brand new gaming computer or upgrade one you already have, does it actually make any difference whatsoever? And we did a video on this around about a year or so ago when we found that basically the answer was no. Yes, having faster memory does help, but it gets to the point of DDR5 where it's so fast it doesn't really matter. However, two things have happened since then. Firstly, we have these brand spanking new graphics cards that are faster than ever and are more and more demanding on our processors. And on that topic, we also have brand spanking new CPUs. So suddenly the bottleneck could have gone from the graphics card or the processor to the RAM. So has it, and what speed should you buy? Is DDR5 really worth the extra money? Find out after a short word from this video's sponsor. Acer's performance laptops are perfect for powerhouse gaming. Whether it's Acer, Predator, or Concept D, there are plenty of options to land super smooth frame rates in the latest titles. For a limited time, you can even grab a month's free Xbox Game Pass Ultimate with selected purchases, giving access to over 100 PC titles at no extra charge. Get yours today with the link down below. Right, this one is going to be short, sweet, and to the point, because I don't want to test things that don't actually matter. I want to test the games that you're actually going to be playing at the settings and resolutions that it actually matters. So our test mythology, we have two different sets of RAM. We have DDR4. This is running at the most popular speed of 3600 megahertz, and it's pretty much the sweet spot when it comes to price to performance. However, that could all change with our second set, which is of course DDR5. And the problem with this is that it is quite a bit more expensive, so it's not a case of just buying it and getting the advantages later, because obviously you have to pay for a whole new motherboard that will be more expensive, but then also DDR5 is more expensive than DDR4. But this is an exception, and not in a good way, because this goes up to a mind-boggling 6600 megahertz speed, which of course you're going to be paying for, but who knows, maybe we're going to get extra performance. And the rig that we have here is very basic, it's an RTX 4090. I realise when I say basic, I'm not talking about the components, this is like a chassis that I've taken the front off of. We do also have a brand new CPU, this is the 13700K, obviously the i9 is available, but in terms of performance it pretty much should be the same as the i9, maybe a couple of extra FPS on that, but nothing really significant. But of course, we do need two different motherboards, and the way that we've done this test to make it as fair as possible is we have the closest two ones that are as close as possible. Obviously, we do have one in this rig, and that's the DDR4 version of this, which is the B660 mortar from MSI. It's not the most advanced motherboard out there, but in terms of raw performance, these two are about as identical as you can get, with the exception, of course, of supporting DDR4 or DDR5. So let me grab our mouse and keyboard and begin, taking the opportunity, of course, to promote the brand new PC-centric mouse mat that I've spent the whole year designing. You can check this out, link down below. Grab yours before December 31st to hit wave one, otherwise you might be waiting quite a few months to get your hands on something as fine as this. Our first game is going to be this, which is Halo Infinite, and all of the titles we're using today will be Ultra. Far Cry, when we get to it, will have some ray tracing, but we're going to test this at 4K and 1440p. And I know a lot of people say, what about 1080p? Well, I am adamant that if you're buying an RTX 4090, 1080p is not a resolution you should be playing at. This is a 1600 pound GPU or more. You can afford a monitor that costs over 150 quid, and I mean it. So we have frame view at the top right hand corner and we're doing a fairly basic benchmark of just walking to the end, getting some repeatable figures and we're going to do this at 1440p as well and we will compare them all at the end. Remember, we're starting with 3600 megahertz here. 191 FPS at 4K, not bad. And because we're doing this for science, we do of course have to open up everybody's favourite benchmarking title, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, because this is going to be static, it's going to be, well, the same scene for scene in every single test. And unlike what most reviewers will do, we're using this at true ultra settings, everything turned up to max, not the preset, and we're using RTX ray tracing and DLSS quality as well. You might ask, why would we do that? Well, it's because it's the settings you're actually going to play on. This isn't about comparing arbitrary numbers, this is about actually gaming on your PC. Do you need faster RAM or not? And this is what we're talking about. So this was running at 4K, but even so, we're still hitting a CPU bound scenario because we're GPU bound 91%, which means there's 9% more performance of this on the table, even with ray tracing enabled. 
Is this something that faster memory can fix? I'll tell you what though, the RTX 4090 is very impressive when it comes to performance. Even with all this ray tracing going on, we're still getting a minimum of about 160 FPS. Averages around about like 220, 230. That's big. Before we got an average of 177, we've gone up to 215, but bearing in mind we're now GPU bound only 32%, I genuinely do think that the faster DDR5 has a very good chance of getting significantly higher FPS, which isn't something I've actually said before. Why does Warzone take so long? Why does Warzone take so long? I'm gonna be here for the whole day. I'm gonna be here for the whole day except that I've got to do this on Monday. Oh wait, the cameras are still on, aren't they? Well, this is Warzone, and we're actually gonna test this in a real game, at the same spot, for science. Come on, Benchmark, let's do this. There are people everywhere, I don't want to get shot. We go through the trees, we navigate across the road. This is so exciting. Can we get to the other tree? Yes. 188 FPS at 1440p. We are definitely getting some bottlenecking. I mean, look, I've turned on the recording so you can actually see what's going on. Interestingly, we are bottlenecked by the CPU, but not as much as I've seen from some other CPUs, around about 5% maybe. It is gonna dip though. This is a game that requires a very big, beefy CPU if you're using a 4090. And then last, but certainly not least, we have one more title to test, some Far Cry 6. And as for our settings, we're going to use 4K and 1440p, of course, again, everything at max. All of our ray tracing enabled. And then we have our Fidelity FX Super Resolution. We're going to turn this to ultra quality. Run the benchmark. Run the benchmark. Come on, let's do this. What do we get? What do we get? 125 FPS average, a minimum of 107. Right, that is now all of our DDR4 tests done, which means turning this off, getting all of the bits taken out, and swapping it all over. Like, you guys are lucky. All the long bits get cut out of the video. <laughs> now, of course, there is quite a lot of testing to do on this platform, and the first thing I'm going to do is actually set it to 3600 megahertz, because I want to make sure that we can see any differences between RAM quantity and RAM speed. Personally, as we've tested before, I don't think you're going to see any difference between 16 and 32, but for science, we need to show you the data. For science! I'm going to stop saying that, that'll get annoying. Okay then, here is our first DDR5 test, this time running at DDR4 speeds, 3600 megahertz. Is it gonna make any difference having 32 gigabytes of RAM versus 16? This test should tell us. Okay, it does seem as if we are massively memory bottlenecked here in Far Cry now, because our results in both 4K and 1440p have gone down drastically. This is not the test I thought this was going to be, but clearly it does show that DDR5 memory does not like being run at slower speeds because it is absolutely killing our performance. Round two, last time 215 FPS, now 193. So this is not a one-off, this is not game dependent. Clearly DDR5, lower speeds, not a good idea. Pressing swiftly on, we've changed the memory now to 4800 megahertz, which is the default that you get with DDR5, though most kits these days you can run typically 5400 or above. So I think that's gonna be a sweet spot, but I'm hoping the performance of this should at least match the performance of DDR4 3600, or it really does beg the question, why go for DDR5? And we're getting 305 to 154 minimum at 1440p. Oh, it's more, it's more. Hmm, it's more at 4K as well. Ah, come on Warzone, give me some FPS. What we got, 171, 100. Oh, that's less. So we've got our baseline data, but now the party really gets started because we can actually try some of our advanced speeds and see whether the capabilities of DDR5 could actually give you better performance in the latest titles with an RTX 4090 or anything super powerful. Right, fast forward to, well, now, where I've done all of the testing other than the 6600 megahertz. And the problem I have with this is that you're paying a lot of money for these super fast kits. I think the fastest you can buy really mainstream at the moment is 6800. But traditionally with DDR4, these kits were nice to haves, but they wouldn't always be compatible with every system, especially AMD. I don't think you can even get an Expo kit over 6000 megahertz. But if you're a diehard enthusiast, you want to extract as much performance as possible 
all out of your system, then you might want to look at one of these memory kits. But will it make a difference and is it going to be worth buying? Let's double check our memory. There it is, running at 6600 megahertz. Let's get gaming. And our first numbers are in 236, 1440p, play higher or lower. That is very exciting. But you know what would be a lot more exciting? Actually showing you the benchmarks. But of course, I can't do that myself, oh no. I need to hand you over to someone that knows these numbers inside and out. The one. The only Benchmarkers. Hello everybody and welcome back to Benchmarkers. And I'm just gonna get straight into it because this is something I'm incredibly passionate about, price to performance. And as you can see across the board, there's just not really huge differences with any of the tests. The only exception actually being DDR5 set to the lower speed of 3600. This clearly didn't work very well and it's not something anyone would actually do or of course I'd recommend. But it's so crazy, isn't it, that even 16 gigabytes of RAM, so half the quantity running at a much lower speed, keeps up with this brand new super fast, the best thing since sliced bread, DDR5 in pretty much every single title. Things like Warzone, it might be worth getting some more expensive memory if you're going for a very expensive PC. But as I'm gonna mention time and time again, please remember that this is running on a top-end CPU with a top-end RTX 4090 GPU, and the vast majority of people watching this are probably gonna be running like a 20 series card or maybe like a 3060, something like that. And it's even less important here because you're not going to be bottlenecked by the CPU in the first place. It's going to be a GPU-bound scenario. So I don't really see any real reason for anyone to get DDR5 unless you absolutely need it or you are looking to future proof or maybe you are rocking like a 4090 and you play exclusively Warzone. It's not actually what I expected to see. I did think we'd get bigger differences but for the sake of like 10 FPS at 175 frames a second, is it really worth spending loads of money on a really expensive motherboard and really expensive super fast RAM when it is very, very clear that if you go for 16 gigabytes of DDR4, you're going to get the best bang for your buck. Because remember, 16 gigabytes of DDR5 doesn't really exist yet. And it'll be a really easy upgrade in the future to double your 16 gig to 32 if games ever need it. So I hope all of this information has been helpful back to the real markets. Well, well, well then, the results. What do you make of them? Are they as drastic as you expected? Well, if I was buying DDR5, I think 5600 megahertz and 6000 clearly are gonna be the sweet spot at the moment. You're gonna get a little bit extra performance. It's not gonna make a huge massive difference, but obviously you want to not restrict your system as much as possible. And this is very good news for Intel because like I've been saying for the last year or so, if you want to save money yet still get a super fast gaming PC, then go for a DDR4 motherboard, get yourself a set of 3600 megahertz DDR4 memory, and then you can get a faster graphics card or just save yourself some money and the real world gameplay isn't really going to change. And I think the thing that has really surprised me is still how close DDR4 is to DDR5. I expected there to be like a bit of a bigger gap, but the fact remains that DDR4 3600 is sort of similar in performance to maybe like 5,200 or so on DDR5. So if you're gonna be paying a load more money for a more expensive motherboard, more expensive memory, and as we showed, that was 16 gigabytes of DDR4 up against 32 of DDR5, I think it puts everything into perspective for you. It's all about value when you're getting a gaming PC, spending your money in the right places, and clearly super fast memory isn't really going to make such a drastic difference when there are so many other things at play. So if you're watching this and you're buying like an RTX 3070 or you're waiting for like, I don't know, AMD 7600 or 7700, then DDR5 memory is not really going to help you because if it doesn't matter with a 4090, it's not going to matter with anything else pretty much. So once again, don't worry too much about your memory or memory speed, timings, all of those things. Clearly enable your Expo or XMP profile if you're happy to do that. Technically it's overclocking, but is it really? Well, yes, but you get the point. Because clearly that is gonna give you some extra performance, but I wouldn't spend hours and hours deciding what's going to be best, because they are going to perform fairly similarly. Let me know your thoughts on this though. Did you expect this to go the way that it has? Did you think DDR5 would be further ahead? Or did you see this coming? Have you been watching my videos for ages and you suspected as much? I'd love to hear from you. Get subscribed if you're not already and smash that like button. And of course, if you do want to check out current pricing on anything featured in this video, or of course, buy yourself the brand new pieces and drink mouse mats, you can find that link down below with my Amazon affiliate links. And while you're down there, why not check out Ace's awesome gaming laptops? 
The Predator Helios 300 Spatial Labs Edition not only lets you breeze through the latest AAA titles, but with its glasses-free stereoscopic 3D technology, it brings a whole new dimension to the game. Selected Acer laptops even come with a free one-month pass to Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. So learn more and grab yours today with the link down below. But thank you so much for watching this video. I'll catch you in the next one.